Hello, this is Rhonda of Green Glass. Uh, what we're going to look at today is just an overview of what the little tabletop kiln can do and what it looks like and what it does. Okay, um, I'm going to be doing some computer work today, so uh, I thought I'd go ahead and kill two birds with one stone, go ahead and sneak the kiln in while my husband was out actually working for a living, and uh, uh, set it up so that I can make beads and uh, do little how-tos on how this works. Now, yes, this tabletop is solid cherry, and no, I don't have a problem with that. We used to use this kiln in our shop, and uh, we used to actually melt glass on a plastic top tabletop. Okay, so it, it, it won't mar anything that I know of. Um, if you have, don't ever put it on your good furniture. I would actually go ahead and recommend getting a piece of plywood and, and putting it on that, something that you don't really care to have burned or not. Um, always make sure that there's nothing flammable around it, okay? This little baby gets hot, okay? But, uh, not really on the tabletop. Now, what the kiln consists of, it's really kind of a little bit freaky, all right? It comes apart in three pieces. Okay, this can be the lid or the bottom or anything some of that nature. These two things are kind of the same, if that makes any sense. And then you have the center where the elements are. Okay, and what you're looking at right there, that's the sensor as to how what temperature it is. Okay, now this kiln was made in 2002, and a little bit dusty, because I haven't had it out for a long time. Um, it does not have any, like, uh, computerized uh, stuff on it, where I can just set it and then have it go or anything like that. This is a hands-on, you need to watch the temperature kind of kiln, okay? Let me go ahead and take that off again. What we're going to do is to set it up... Um, I broke my first kiln shelf. So this is a kiln shelf, okay? It's a brand new one, or at least one I got several months ago but haven't used. And I really need to go ahead and whew, put um, some kiln wash on it. Okay, now kiln wash comes in a, a powdered form, okay? We use a lot of it, all right, just on the uh, vase candle stuff. And so you mix it up. There are actually directions on here. It's mix one part shelf primer to five parts water. Um, we normally just don't measure. Um, I just have done this for so many years that I just go ahead. This is the consistency I, I want, and this is what I get. Okay. Now, you can hear a lot about people uh, using a haiku brush, and I've used that before. And you know what? I mean, all the little hairs come off on it, and I, I just I just don't, I'm not there with that. Love you, not there with that. And so what I like to use are these sponges right here. Okay? Now, they're, they're not exactly everything that you, you know, you don't pick these up automatically. These are something that you have to look out for. This is more of a softer uh, sponge thing where it's like... Um, it's, it's hard to explain. Let me grab a real sponge. All right. Okay. I have too many things going at one time. This is what normally you find in uh, the store. Okay. This is normally it. See how there's a difference? There are no holes. Right? And it's a lot softer. Now, we use this on everything. Everything. As far as, like, kiln work and stuff like that. Okay? So, um, it leaves a really smooth finish without the haiku brush trauma. You know? Uh, you can pretend to use the haiku brush. And people will say, oh, that's wonderful. That's up to you. Um, we just don't care. Anyway... This is what we use. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to brush it on cold. Okay. All right. Here we go. Now, I'm not going to fire on this today. Okay. 
I'm not going to fire on this today. I just wanted to have a uh, non-stick surface when I do fuse. Okay. I do have a, a tray back here, so I'm not, you know, au naturel on everything. And yes, it is solid cherry, and yes, I am aware of that. It'll be okay. All right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and put it on top. Make sure that it's as level as it gets. All right. And there it goes. Now I'm going to plug it in. Now what else I've got plugged in over here? All right. And off we go to the races. The easiest way to make sure that your kiln is off is to unplug it. Okay, so don't just turn it off, unplug that bad boy, and plug it directly into an electrical outlet. Don't have the, uh, the little, you know, extension cords or anything, some of that nature. And so we're going to go ahead and just take it up to medium. You could probably take it up to high, uh, but we're looking for a couple hundred degrees, okay? Once again, I know it says to take it up to 500 and all of that kind of stuff. We just, we just don't do it. So, but when you're trying it out and when you're starting out, follow the directions that the uh, manufacturer gives. I mean, I'm just, I'm just telling you because I don't know quite what you've got or what you don't have or that kind of thing. So, that's, that's enough of me being wishy-washy. Anyway, while this is heating up, I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off and then bring it back on when we're ready to go ahead and set up the tile.